Okay, welcome. So this is another Majestic INFJ video, and I noticed I got sunburn today. So I get, I, as you can probably tell, I burn very easily. Um, anyways, this is um, my series of videos on the different cognitive functions. Um, I'm going through each of the functions and just coming up with a quick 10, 15 minute video. Um, uh, basically describing how I think of them, how they how they work in the overall cognitive function system. Um, I did make an intro video. If you haven't watched that, I invite you to watch that. It sort of talks about the sort of the nuances and the caveats of doing these sorts of videos, just so I don't have to do it each time. Um, but you know, if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. You know, you can you can start at any of these videos, but. If you have any major complaints about me missing some sort of nuance point or something like that, feel free to watch the intro video. Maybe I address it there. Um, okay, so we uh, so so far I've done the, the the rational functions, the thinking and the feeling, extroverted and introverted, and so now I'm going to move to the so-called perception functions, sensing and intuition, and this one's going to be on let's go with introverted sensing for this one so introverted sensing and admittedly these get a little bit more complicated because um if you've watched the ti fi tefe videos um you're going to notice that some of the sensing and intuition functions sort of overlap with things that I was talking about in the other videos. Um, I'd love to be able to parse out everything in a very discreet manner, but these are short videos. And so there's going to be some overlap. There's going to be some gaps. So, you know, but hopefully in future videos, we sort of fill in those gaps and, you know, tease things apart, parse them apart a little bit better. So, Okay, so introverted sensing. Um, introverted sensing is basically experience-based knowledge. Um, and, you know, as you go along in the world, you engage in different experiences, right? You have various things happen to you. Um, and I would think about, the way I sort of think about it is that it's just what we normally think of as memory. Um, memory in the sense of like episodic memory, like remembering what you did when you woke up today, or remembering what you had for lunch last week, or remembering your wedding day, or your first day of kindergarten, or your first day of high school, or your high school grad, you know, all these various salient events that have happened to you, or even non-salient events, right? So, remembering that time you went to the grocery store and you saw your neighbor, and man, wasn't that funny. Um, that kind of stuff is very SI. But it's also... It, it, it ties also to just sort of your internal state, right? Your sort of physical well-being, you know, how do you feel? And there actually is a lot of psychological research out there, a lot of brain cognitive neuroscience research out there that shows that the same parts of your brain, mainly the limbic system, that are responsible for sort of controlling your 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 internal sense of well-being right and i don't want to confuse you by saying feeling right because you know i don't want to confuse the functions but basically you know how do you feel physically right not not feeling in the sense of you know i like it versus i don't like it not your opinion but just you know, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel warm? Do you feel cold? And the the same parts of the brain that are controlling that or processing that type of information are also laying down memory, you know, these episodic memories. What did you have for lunch today? Um, you know, where did you live when you were, or what was your street like when you were in third grade, that kind of stuff, you know, just remembering the past. 
And, you know, there's a pretty good theory, pretty good psychological theory argument out there that when you recover those episodes, you're recovering that physical state, that physical state of being along with it. And so that's why, you know, you have a, uh, you know, things that are highly triggering emotionally, you know, that jack up your adrenaline and you know sort of put you into that fight or flight mode you know things like where were you when you heard about the twin towers getting hit for those of you who were around at the time like everybody (laughs) who was alive and sort of above a certain age level when the twin towers went down on 9 11 everybody remembers where they were and how they heard about it um and you know and that goes to you know you have this rush of adrenaline, this fight or flight sort of response. um, And it gets tagged in with that memory of the episode. Okay. So SI is a little bit of a combination of the, of both, right? So it's your past experience, your past memory, but also just sort of your general state of being, you know, are you warm? Are you comfortable? Um, do you feel cold, that kind of stuff? Do you feel sick? Do you feel elated? Are you pumped up with adrenaline? Um, you know, do you want to fight? Do you want to fly? That kind of thing. Um, and then that is going to tie in your experience-based memory as well. Um, and so sometimes you'll see people argue, well, SI is memory and um, and it has nothing to do with like your internal state and other people might say, no, it's all about your internal state and it's not memory. Well, it's both. It's both. And you're and, and, and if you actually look at your, you know, at the human brain, you see that that system is all tied together. Right. And so that's why I would argue SI is basically a combination of the two. So sometimes, you know, if I'm talking about SI or other people are talking about SI, they might be making reference to, you know, how does somebody feel in the moment? Um, And again, not the, you know, cognitive function feeling, but, you know, the actual, you know, do you feel warm? Do you feel cold? Do you feel full of adrenaline? That kind of thing. Um, But also, you know, uh, but also talking about it in terms of just being able to remember things like rules like when somebody's birthday is or thing you know things that you've learned through experience um so it gets a little fuzzy and even people outside of the psychological type community that do like actual memory research in psychology you know they have a hard time teasing apart different types of memory you know semantic memory versus episodic memory or declarative memory versus procedural memory um because there's a lot of overlap between the two. Um, and, you know, so uh, so sometimes you might hear people talking about SI being, you know, remembering episodes where other people might be talking about it, like remembering facts, like when somebody's birthday is or, you know, what does the word anti-disestablishmentarianism mean? You know, that kind of stuff. But... At the end of the day, it's all based off of experience. It's things that you have learned about the world based off of your experience. Okay. Now, those of you who saw my video on TI, I talk about building up a representation of the world, building up sort of a schematic map or a semantic map um, of, you know, what things are birds and what things are dogs and what things are cats and what things are edible plants and what things are poisonous plants, all that kind of stuff. Um, That's built through your logical system. But you also might, you know, on top of that, be building a knowledge base just purely based off of your experience. Like um, you don't necessarily have to go through a whole lot of logical um, procedures if you eat some sort of fruit and you break out in hives, right? Like your experience tells you, okay, don't eat that fruit. Um, And, you know, logic might not have gotten you there um, because you didn't have the necessary, you know, background knowledge 
but your experience taught you that, right? Um, and so you're building up your knowledge of the world in different ways, right? You're building it through your TI, through a logic-based system. You're building it through your FI. You know, is something generally beneficial to me or harmful to me? Um, and then you're also building it through your SI. Did I, you know, you're just remembering I had a bad experience with that thing or... I remember that guy from, you know, uh, from the store. And so therefore that's the guy that works at the store. Um, you know, I, I was at the store and I saw him working there and therefore I know that guy works at the store, right? Um, based off of my experience. So heavy SI users are going to be, um, experience driven, right? Um, so your ISTJs, your ISFJs, um, they are, you know, mostly going to, when they're interacting with the world and they're trying to solve the daily problems of the world, they're going to draw on their knowledge about the world based off of experience, you know, little tricks of the trade that people taught them along the way. Um, rules that, you know, um, that they, you know, either learned along the way or they were sort of tinkering around and they figured out, oh, this this works, right? And, you know, but just based off of their experience, right? Um, and they're going to use that um, to, you know, guide their extroverted thinking or their extroverted feeling or their introverted thinking or their introverted feeling. They're going to use that experience to sort of guide the decisions that they're making along the way with those other functions. Um, and so that's how they all sort of interact. Um, and, you know, heavy SI users are, you know, they, they, they like things that remind them of, um, you know, good experiences like baking cookies, hanging out with grandma, Christmas, Halloween, you know, just sort of experience based events. Um, and, uh, you know, they sort of have an affinity towards that. Um, or, you know, maybe just sort of, you know, history thing, things that, you know, have to do with experience have to do with just, and again, it's like, you know, they're, they're bringing up that physical state as well. Right. And so if, if, you know, Christmas always makes them feel like they're seven years old again, right? You know, they're bringing up that physical experience, that physical well-being along with, um, you know, the particular memory. Um, and so, you know, they tend to be very traditional in that respect because it reminds them of the safe, happy times, right? Um, okay. So that's pretty much SI um, in a nutshell. Um, and I invite any sort of questions or um, responses, um, uh, you know, um, or anything that I missed that you want to point out, feel free. Um, and I'm happy to engage and I'll see you at the next video. All right. Thanks. Bye.